everybody should have access. And I think that's the key word is to have access because equality is about treating everybody the same. Equity is about giving folks what they need. Well, I'm also an educator. You know, I planned on uh, playing in the National Football League for 10 years. I ended up playing for 10 minutes and I got cut by the Minnesota Vikings. NFL stands for not for long. So I found myself limping into a classroom in 1995 and um, kids were broken. I was broken. So you got hurt people trying to teach people, you know, and it was just really difficult. Even people of my own culture. I really didn't like the way I saw educators interacting with kids and I decided to do something about it. So I started doing professional development uh, with educators and then um, was approached with the opportunity um, with ASCD uh, to write this piece. I wrote this, this book out of pain, actually. You know, it was a lot of trauma and a lot of pain that I experienced and a lot of our young people continue to experience on a daily basis. You know, racism, culture barriers, and discrimination still exist. Uh, no matter how some folks try to sugarcoat it, it still exists. Um, so when we have all these issues that are in the forefront, we need to make sure that we have something to fight it with. We need to have, we need to make sure we're putting out some good information that's going to help educators educate, activate, and motivate kids to be great, which is our job. So I wrote a study guide as well. So a lot of schools are using it as um, a book study um, with their staff, uh, with administrators, with teachers, with deans, with counselors, uh, other uh, support staff, bus drivers uh, are using it, um, uh, cafeteria staff. So a lot of schools are using it. Um, we're doing the workshops and then they're using the book as a book study to continue the conversation because this is not a one day conversation. It's really a good way to uh, bring your staff together because diversity is about acceptance and respect. So I broke down some of those definitions and explained why young men behave the way they do, why they think the way they do. This book wasn't written to shame anybody. I want you to come as you are. And I think the way that it can help our young men of color is teaching us as educators how to help ourselves first. Because if I practice self-care and if I start looking at things differently, I'm helping myself uh, first. And then once I get myself together, then I can go out and pour into other people. And I think I really wanted to break that down in the book when I start breaking down into the chapters and, and um, you know, this is dealing with culture diversity, this is dealing with pre-criminalization, marginalization, colorism, um, I can't remember so many different things, invisibilization, micro, racial microaggressions. I wanted people to really understand the effects of what this does. And I think once they start understanding the effects of how it affects other people and in their livelihood, not just now, but I'm talking about into their adult years. Um, I think if you have a little bit of empathy, if you care just a little bit, I think it'd be a great resource for you. Even before the pandemic, I was, you know, preaching to educators, take care of yourself. You gotta do a better job of self-care. Um, I think self-care is extremely important because your physical health and your mental health should be on the same level. Both of them are equally important, so you need to work hard at both.